WizardFu here, bringing you another video in the Load Ragger 5 vs. 5 development series. Um, today I did some fun stuff. Check it out. Um, right now I'm in the phase where I'm mocking up 2D gameplay right now. So Load Ragger will be a... Uh, 3D voxel art with tiny voxels so it looks like pixel art but it's all 3D um, but in the meantime while well, I'm kind of got that voxel engine simmering it's maybe halfway done something like that but in the meantime I'm focusing up purely on gameplay and how liberating it is so uh, what I did today was I made it so the player which is currently represented by a circle can use one of the buttons to swing an axe and chop down the trees. How fun is that? Super cheesy artwork. Um, the alignment of the axe and everything really needs some work, but the basic mechanics of it are there, right? You press a button, an axe entity appears for a moment, damaging nearby things that it can damage as in trees well it'll be just mostly yeah actually the only thing the lumberjack can chop down is the trees or whatever so there that's how you would carve your lane right this is now my team has a lane right here there's also the lane that goes over here to the cave you can go to the cave world and i can try and chop down the rocks but can't do that as the lumberjack so anyways, the next thing I'll be working on is uh, making it so you can purchase different roles. So right here we have this little icon represents the um, building where you buy the lumberjack roll. So you start off as rolless, which is represented by this circle. And if you purchase the lumberjack axe, you become the lumberjack and you can chop down trees like this. Woo! All right. So if you purchase the, ha purchase the hammer, you become a builder and you can build buildings. So that's that. Um, let me show you what some of this code looks like to do all this. Uh, we have, okay, let's go to this little window here. Um, the first thing I did was worked on the input system a little bit so it can use buttons. Um, and the buttons are all filtered. The, the way they're, the buttons are used right here, if the button's down and the input's not locked, then it can use an ability or it can release an ability. As in, you, you press the button, hold it, that, that's calling usability. Uh, and once you release it, it calls release ability. So you can charge things up, or hold things down and let go to, to confirm, things like that. So here's use, usability, release ability, just looks up the ability in this map here, and runs that function. So anyways, that's how, it, that's how act, the axe would get used. If the ability type axe um, is used as a button, then it does this. It runs this. And basically what this is doing is it's creating a temporary entity. It creates an axe entity, um, sets its position based on the character's <coughs> or the player's last heading, and then destroys it after a a delay so lifetime is a third of a second approximately and this destroys that entity after a third of a second so that's how it you get this temporary lifetime entity an axe and uh, here's what that axe uh, data looks like so it loads this um, from data and then creates three different components it creates a position component a render component and a collision component the render component has uh, that cheesy sprite the collision has a size category a mask what it hits and damage actually I don't know if it needs a mask I think it's the other way around the the, uh, the trees have the mask ah, something like that anyways um, yeah so that that's how I got the axe to work today and then um, I started working on a roll component so this roll component is pretty sweet. This is where a lot of the fun um, data of the game is going to be stored. Like the roll type that you currently are 
Here's all the roles there are, like roll list, lumberjack builder, and all them. Arch ragger and load ragger. And then uh, each role component has two abilities. So those are, I got these uh, started here, and then uh, let's see, ability.h. So these are some of the abilities you have. You can block, you can drag, you can use the axe. There's a second level axe, like a spinning axe attack. And all these little different things, abilities you can use. And then and then each of one of the uh, roles has a certain experience level, and that's cumulative for the whole match. So you gain experience as a lumberjack. You now you're a level two lumberjack or whatever. Um, and then you later switch to a builder. You get your builder at say you're only at level one, but you switch back to the lumberjack. You're still going to be at level two. So it tracks your exp per roll. Um, and then you have gold from. Uh, fighting neutral creeps and uh, the enemy and uh, wood from chopping down trees and then eventually they'll have something like strength dexterity armor etc there'll be more and more of those kind of like attributes so that's fun attributes are a fun thing because uh, you'll be able to upgrade these during the match you'll be like and your armor that you wear will affect that so that'd be that's some that's some fun data right here it's fun so anyways so there's role component and ability. And that's, um, there's one more thing I guess I want to mention. Um, if you're paying attention to my last live stream, at the end of it, I was stuck on something where I was like, hmm, how shall I proceed with destroying entities? Now, I decided that I, I to simplify things, and because I'm using a contiguous buffer for locating all components so that all the components stay within the, uh, about the same memory range, especially if it for a certain entity, it will construct all of its components or locate them all in the same area of memory so that hopefully that reduces cache misses for the CPUs and makes the game kind of just naturally run faster. So I was able to swizzle all that allocation into entity, the actual entity food on CPP before I had it in uh, low draggers specific source code. So now I've moved it, uh, sort of modularized it, um, uh, you could say made it agnostic to what any component might be. This, this doesn't, doesn't have to know anything about what type of component it is. It just needs to know the size of the component. So the size can be determined by a template method. And then this a lot component method can do the most of the work, the heavy lifting uh, without re re relying on any template or any knowing, needing to know about anything else about a component besides its size. So it's a simple thing. All it does is create an, a buffer, a, a big buffer full of data. It's just blank characters. And then um, whenever it allocates a component, it checks if it could fit and then um, returns a, a void pointer to the uh, entity data buffer plus that size offset or I mean plus the current data index offset and then bumps its entity data index by the size um, so that you'll notice you should any astute viewer right now is noticing hey you haven't implemented any kind of recovery for that data like once I go and remove a component there no there's nothing that actually reclaims this entity data index so it's just a ticking time bomb if you create enough entities you'll eventually run out even if you delete some of the entities in the back that you had already created. So I need to do that, right? Also one thing that could happen there is fragmentation of the memory. So you could have little pockets of uh, free space for entities have gotten removed and deleted and removed, whatever. So there's ways to handle all that. I'll need to implement some of that. But for now, I think this is a very good thing to have all of the data for a certain entity all in one little place. Keeps it really good hopefully for for um, the L1 cache, the L2 cache, stuff like that. Um, I'm not sure how to prove that. If anybody is watching this and you know how to prove that, you know how to profile that kind of stuff, I'd love to learn. Please send me a comment. That's it for now. Wizafoo signing off.